And now the AM News. The Speaker of Parliament has deferred the motion filed by the MP for Inchiaiso calling for a termination of the ongoing capitation program, which is currently being piloted in the Ashanti region. According to Dr. Richard Anani, the NHIA's 2014 target of 1,995,940 subscribers will not be realized if the program continues. The member for Nshiaiso and the ranking member of the Committee on Health, Dr. Richard Anani, stated in his submission that out-of-pocket expenditure recorded in the hospitals in the region has doubled. He said the pilot program also discriminates against the Ashanti region. Out-of-pocket expenditure as a percentage of the total health expenditure in the eastern region was 36%, whereas in the Ashanti region it was 64%. Instead of creating equality or an improvement in health access, the implementation of the capitation program in Ashanti has skewed out-of-pocket expenditure against the people of Ashanti. Mr. Speaker, by the implementation, first through a pilot and then a so-called phased implementation, the issues of discriminatory treatment with respect to access to health care and discriminatory, discriminatory catastrophic out-of-pocket expenditure have been brought to the fore. The majority leader then came in with a proposal for an amendment to the original motion filed by the MP for Nshiaiso, which sparked arguments on the floor. We are seeking to say that as the motion stands, let's simply delete the word extend, uh, the word terminate, and add the word extend. And then we come to the end of Ashanti region and add to other regions of Ghana. And in that, we are also keeping faith with the fact that it is a legitimate legal requirement. And the only reason why you can terminate its implementation is to amend the law. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this automatically takes away, I do not know, the discrimination that is anticipated by the mover of the motion of either residents of Ashanti or citizens of Ashanti, it will not arise. MP for Brekum East, Dr. Kwabna Chum Nyama, disagreed with the majority leader's suggestion, saying it will rather aggravate the situation. But if piloting this in Ashanti region has brought these negative results to the Ashanti region and all these challenges, why is the authority trying to extend this payment mechanism to other regions of the country? Mr. Speaker, I shudder to say that if this mechanism is extended to other regions, then the target of the country into increasing the level of active membership in 2014 will not be achieved. The Speaker then brought the House to order and ruled after listening to the suggestions from members of the House. I give you the opportunity to go and consult, build a consensus around this matter, because I share the sentiments and press on the floor of the House that we cannot put aside the health of our people. The MP for Mansu Edubia, Yaofim Pong Adu, justified the call for the termination of the program. The NHI itself hired a consultant to review the capitation in Ashanti region. And, and the recommendation that they gave was that they were not in the position to recommend its extension to other places. So if the consultant has said this, then it means something terribly has gone wrong. Still in Parliament, the Minister for Transport was in the House to answer to a question on the rehabilitation of the Sunyani Airport, which he said will commence later this year. The Minister of Agriculture, who was represented by his deputy, Dr. Ahmed Yakubu Hassan, also answered questions on the Asantiqua irrigation project and the total number of tractors and accessories imported from India in 2008. The Upper East Regional Minister Alhaji Limuna Mohammed Muniru has mobilized an amount of 800,500 Ghana cities to support the region's emergency tertiary health care foundation fund. The fund aims to support needy patients who require expensive surgeries. Upper East correspondent Albert Sorry has more. The Upper East Emergence was set up by the Regional Health Services Directorate to assist needy patients who have serious health problems that require expensive surgeries. 
The fund is open to anybody who wants to donate for its purpose. The Upper East Regional Minister's presentation followed a pledge he made to support a patient who was in need of 10,000 Ghana CDs for a surgery at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. This was after he took part in a fundraising event organized by Bogatanga Bay's radio station, Tanga Radio, on the 31st of December last year. The Upper East Regional Minister also appealed to all municipal and district chief executives in the region, as well as individuals and philanthropists, to support the Upper East Tertiary Healthcare Foundation Fund. Head of the emergency, the emergency Health Foundation Fund for Upper East Region. Then I said, fine, this is a very laudable idea. So we invited Ghana Health Service so that we channel the money through that, that can take care of, like he just explained, more than even we were expecting. Administrator of the Upper East Regional Health Services Directorate, Lucio Derry, receiving the money, expressed gratitude to the regional minister, but added that very little support is coming from the public, even though patients with very serious health complications have already applied for assistance from the fund. We also have somebody with also a, a child, she's, she's still a, a child, um, with a chronic bone problem, which has already taken her through a couple of surgeries. In fact, about four or five, five surgeries. And the condition is not fully rectified. And so we are going <coughs> to take her through the final uh, stage at say Kolebu for them to also see if they can find a permanent corrective uh, measure for her condition. Albert Soros reports from the Upper East Region. We stay with health and community-based health planning service compounds are facing challenges with health insurance because the compounds are not accredited by the National Health Insurance Authority. Komla Ado reports. This was revealed by the Volta Regional Director of Health Services, Dr. Joseph Tainwete, in an interview with Joy News at the annual performance review in WHO. According to Dr. Nwete, it's unfortunate the National Health Insurance Scheme is only focused on regional and district hospitals. According to him, it is failing the health services strategy for rural people to access health care through the CHIPS compounds. So the CHIPS compound becomes health facility for them to go to. Unfortunately, we have a challenge with health insurance. Health insurance is focusing on regional hospitals and district hospitals. But how about the chief's compound, which are the primary, very primary facilities that black people have access to. They are not accredited as it were. So um, they gave a provisional accreditation at the beginning. But we realize that there is a need to do a comprehensive accreditation for them to have the free will to be able to be paid appropriately for the primary illnesses that they attend to. Dr. Nweti said there is the need for the health service to dialogue with the National Health Insurance Authority to be able to recognize the CHIPS compounds. Comlado's report for Joy News. Let's turn attention to some party political news and uh, the vetting of aspirants to national executive positions in the new projected party was concluded on Thursday with a final batch of 23 appearing before the party's committee. They included incumbent General Secretary Kwijo Ousefi and Chairman Jake Obejebilamte, so 44 for... 10 leadership positions um, are hoping to be given the chance to lead the party in the 2016 elections. The vetting process follows a successful filing of nomination forms and payment of necessary fees by the aspirants. 44 aspirants in all were subjected to the vetting process, which was held in Camera, the party's headquarters. The general secretaries, treasurers, vice chairman and chairman aspirants were amongst the last batch. In an interview after the Averton, the urge delegates to choose competence over personal loyalties. I'm very confident that we are going to reclaim victory in 2016. Exactly how are you going to do that? 
as I said, selecting the competent candidates at the local level, making sure the party is genuinely united and moving as a force and to ensure that the legally elected representatives of our people at the constituencies, the executives, become the fulcrum around which the campaigns are conducted. I think uh, what I'm bringing on board is simple. We all know that we are in a party in opposition. And a party in opposition, we need financial resources to be able to mobilize uh, activities that will give us the victory we require for 2016. So how to get resources to the grassroots constituencies is also a priority that I'm going to ensure that these resources will get there. <laughs> I am presenting to my party the new plan for power. And it is a strategic plan that is going to ensure that we beat the NDC in 2016. Oh, we need to unite this party. I am the person to unite this party. And once we are united, I promise you, we use the new plan for power, victory in 2016. We will walk into that Jubilee House, 7th January 2017. The incumbents, however, played up their advantage over their challenges. 2016, we shall win the elections. Thank you. Yeah. We shall not go back to the court, but the elections, we shall win the elections. How, how it is done, we work very hard together with all our party delegates and the rank and file of Ghanaians. Now you could see that Ghanaians are suffering. There's too much suffering in the land. Now this government has no clue what is happening. And prayers alone cannot help Dom Hama. Duncan Williams, 10 of Duncan Williams cannot help Dom Hama. It's the MPP who would rescue this country from, 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 from the quagmire in which we find ourselves. The question of whether you get retained or not is a matter for the delegates to decide on that. We must begin to look at managing this party like a corporate institution. So you need people with some competences to come on board. And I think I do have some of those. I've been in management for uh, quite a, a greater part of my life. Inshallah. I certainly have the experience and I certainly have the knowledge and the brains. Okay, um, so we'll see if the delegates say yes. Then we'll try and uh, put it together. Well, it's a different time. It's a different time. So it has to be a slightly different message. You know, but the same thing is, I mean, the, the, the objective is still the same. The objective is to rescue this country from the gang of thieves and try and bring the country back onto, back onto proper governance again. Yes, the MPP knows what to do. Yes. Start off by being not thieves, by being uh, straightforward people, okay. by making sure that the monies that are that the, the country realizes in revenues or in aid or whatever are used for the purposes for which they have been uh, secured. The national executive elections of the party is scheduled to be held in Tamale on April 12, 2014. Hmm. Former President Jerry John Rawlins has described as incompetent a sizable percentage of government officials seven in President Mahama's government According to the former president, people have reached the saturation point and it is important that President Mahama reshuffles his ministers. The former president was speaking, was speaking in an exclusive interview with Elton John Brobe. I'm not unaware of the occasional misuse of my name by elements in the party and government to cover up their own weaknesses. No such list has come to my office. And let me assure you, if such a list were to come to my office, it would take not, no longer than 30 minutes on my table because all I'll have to do is to tick, cancel, or put a question mark to any such suggested names and send it right back to where it would have come from. Most of the time, I hear these things on the air like most of you. Yes, and that's true. These changes, I believe, should have taken place towards the end of last year when Ghanaians had actually reached their saturation point with what they perceived you know as the incompetence or the non-performance of some of the appointees but it didn't happen there's a bit of stress there's I mean, anxiety some sense of expectation mm. but there again that's where my name becomes a convenient tool to be misused but make no mistake some of us who are perceived to be part and parcel of the changes or these developments 
hear it also on the air like most of you. And I find it extremely mischievous that some of the leaders in the party tend to create this false impression that Rawlings knows and approves of everything going on in government. So this is purely on the fact that mm -hmm. some of the appointees are simply not competent. Of course. <laughs> A sizable percentage of them, I don't think, uh, should have were good enough. And they demonstrated it with their time in office. But uh, And I don't think this is a matter of opinion, really. I think um, we can all see, you know, the result of their, their work. The NDC Member of Parliament for Gumwa West, Francis Kwejo Arthur, has blamed the decline in the world market price of cocoa for the sharp decline of Ghana's currency, the city, and the attendant economic challenges being experienced by Ghanaians. The argument by the Parliamentary Finance Committee member is yet another one of the theories attempting to explain the current economic woes being faced by the country. MP's comments come on the back of measures announced last week by the Bank of Ghana to boost the fortunes of the Ghana city, which has experienced a sharp depreciation against the other foreign currencies in recent times. This added to the increase in VAT and fuel prices and a general increase in cost of living has made life very tough for many Ghanaians, with governments under fire for failing to manage the economy well. But the Gumwa West MP suggests government alone cannot be blamed for the current situation. Having been the country's major foreign exchange earner for so long, Francis Kujoata explains that any significant drop in the price of cocoa has serious implications for the economy. Addressing a section of the media at a palm in the central region, the MP also touched on the pricing of gold and the country's oil production, which he says has not met expectations, thereby contributing to the difficulties. The, the, the problem has to do with the first thing that I said, that we do have control over the price of cocoa outside. So for that, we do have control. Uh, but what we can do is to, one, increase production. And it's not only cocoa, we also have to increase production in gold so that even when the market world price falls down, we can still make some you know, inroads. He suggested a remedy to the situation, including revisiting the days where Ghana used to produce import substituted goods to reduce the dependency on imports. Meanwhile, the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Kwesi Oponfusu, on an inspection tour of ongoing projects in the central region says he is impressed with the level of development, adding that the success of the project will surely inform government's policies as far as the district assembly concept is concerned. Judging RPS report from the central region. In a related development, the Association of Ghana Industries has raised serious concerns about some of the measures announced by the Bank of Ghana to arrest the fall of the Ghana city. Chief Executive Officer of the Association, Seth Chum Akwabua, expressed worry its members were not consulted before the measures were announced and are therefore asking for wider consultations to address the issues. AGI President Sir Chum Akwabwa said, while the association appreciates the steps taken by government to reverse the downward trend of the city and the economy as a whole, members of the association have cause to believe some of the measures are not business friendly and must be revoked. Uh, Bank of Ghana is asking for uh, within five days, uh, five working days to convert, you know, our process of uh, exports into Ghana cities. Uh, we think that uh, this is going to be very challenging I mean, to a lot of our businesses, uh, especially businesses uh, that are engaging in exports and uh, at the same time uh, import their raw materials and equipment. He again expressed worry some of the interventions by the central bank were not immediately addressed could lead to the eventual closure of some local Ghanaian businesses. Now, if I have $500,000, I mean, bill to pay to my supplier, and I begin to build up this sort of uh, fund, I mean, in my foreign margin account, and then you want to actually convert it back into Ghana cities uh, within 60 days, I mean, uh, what happens? I mean, it's very difficult to really understand. And in this case, it's, it's been talking about 30-day limit you see, of converting back if the money has not been transferred to the supplier. 
Yeah, we, we think that this is uh, very difficult for businesses I mean, to operate with. The Bank of Ghana last Monday announced a number of measures aimed at curbing the increasing dollarization of the economy and hopefully to strengthen the local currency. Per the measures announced, it will be illegal for public and private institutions to trade in dollars. The measures have received widespread criticism, even though government and cabinet have supported it. The association is set to meet members of the Finance Ministry, Trade and Industry Ministry, as well as officials of the Bank of Ghana to seek clarity on some of the measures and the possibility of having those measures re looked at by the close of the week. Ambitious professionals, investors and entrepreneurs with a potential and desire to advance in their leadership and management careers have an opportunity to do so now at Lancaster University, Ghana. The university says its global executive MBA program, which was launched at the Ghana campus on Thursday, is designed to build capacity of professionals in today's business world. The Lancaster Global MBA is a two-year program aimed at developing strategic leaders from all fields. The program, which is set to take off in Ghana from July, is already running in Jordan and Singapore. It is expected to combine the expertise of Lancaster, UK, in delivering post-work experience programs. We're taking people in from a range of uh, functional backgrounds, so it doesn't matter whether or not you're in pharmaceuticals or whether or not you're in marketing or whether or not you come from the petrochemical industry or whether or not you're in a government position. We believe that by bringing people together from a range of expertise and training, the quality of the class discussion that we can generate will lead to better decision-making and better, a better teaching environment. These future business leaders will develop a network and part of the MBA offering is joining a network of like-minded individuals who you can call upon. Provost of the University, Professor John Granger said, Lancaster University Ghana is committed to providing quality programs to ensure that Ghanaians and Africans at large have access to world-class tertiary education without having to travel abroad. Most places in the world you can get a, 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 an MBA it may or may not be high quality, but when you present your credentials to a new company or to a potential uh, employer and you have the Lancaster University um, program, Lancaster University UK on your degree certificate, that is an assurance because we insist on quality. So you pay for quality as we know that. He said the school was committed to churning out more entrepreneurs to reduce the high unemployment numbers. We are equipping people to um, get it, they take their place, their rightful place in the job market. Okay, but from the entrepreneurial perspective, we are not tied to books. We are tied to learning. We are tied to learning from the past. We are tied to theory, but we do it in a practical way. So all the courses that we're offering, and each one of them is specifically taught using practical examples as well as the theoretical aspects. The course is going to be run on a part-time basis, and students who complete the program will be awarded an MBA certificate by the Lancaster University UK. Road users and traders around the Kwame Nkrumah Circle are urging speedy completion of a three-tier interchange there, pleading that governments avoid a situation where the project will stall. They explain any excuses to delay the projects, such as lack of funds, would compound the already heavy traffic situation. The Kwame Nkrumah Circle is a major hub in the road transportation network in Accra, with about 84,000 vehicles passing through daily. Its importance cannot be underestimated as it links the sub-urban areas of Accra to the central business district. The myriad of commercial activities which take place here, especially at the pedestrian shopping mall and the various bus terminals, draw hundreds of thousands of commuters. One of the admirable features of the Kwame Nkrumah Circle 
was the ever-flowing fountain. But as construction work has started, it is no more. In place would be a world-class interchange to ease the traffic congestion in the capital. But of great concern to traders and commuters of this road is how soon the project would be completed. They fear that any delay in the completion of the project could aggravate the tense traffic situation in the capital. Motorists are sometimes inconvenienced by the diversions created as a result of the project. They say they are willing to cooperate with the authorities to ensure work progresses smoothly. On my best start, normally a year meeting about three or four times for well, cathedral. Uh huh. And you are much there, Senna. On my best, I should say, when you are Senna, they are higher in age. Oh, well, recently, the Omoba are more diverting, but on my first aim. Which is a SC group for an EBCA, a coin in my direction. I be faso. But others are worried the construction may cause unprecedented floods when the rains set in. Meanwhile, the notorious storm drain right in front of the Kumasi bus terminal has finally been covered with the other, also being worked on. Though the project, however, is scheduled to be completed in 24 months, contractors believe they could finish ahead of schedule as funds are already available. Yafusia Jemfi, Joy News, in Chroma Circle. Well, so that's it for the latest news update we have for you on the AM Show. Now a recap of our top stories. Road users and traders around the Kwame Nkrumah Circle are urging speedy completion of a three-tier interchange. The Association of Ghana Industries, the AGI, has raised serious concerns about some of the measures that are announced by the Bank of Ghana to arrest the fallen city. And the Speaker of Parliament has deferred the motion filed by the MP for Inshai, so calling for a termination of the ongoing capitation program which is currently being piloted in the Ashanti region. That's all. In the AM News, we'll bring you Spots, which is brought to you by Tilo and Cowbell. Lucille, we'll be right back. The chairman of the Ghana FA Cup Committee chair, and uh, that is we have Lepora Jawula, um, has been speaking on the current MTN FA Cup competition. He believes it's a vibrant one. So far, I think it's been interesting, and today's parents have even made it far more interesting because we are looking forward to a good pair of matches within this competition. Uh, a mix of premier and first division clubs and Premier versus Premier, I think is going to say a lot of the coming days. Yeah, we're, we're surprised that all of a sudden we are meeting uh, issues of hooliganism, issues of attacks on officials and the rest, and I think it's quite worrying. It, it tells you by itself that the competition is becoming keener and keener, and people are, are beginning to show more interest than before, but that does not mean that spectators should take the law into their own hands. We think all this should stop. We should play football by the rules. If anybody is dissatisfied, he can come by the rules, come to the GFA, make a protest, go on appeal, and then win, win the case on merit. But to go brutal, as some of them are doing, would not do any good to the competition. Don't forget, this competition is being funded by MTN. They want good mileage out of their investments. Violence will not give them any mileage. And this weekend, there will be some fixtures in the MTN FA Cup, and uh, soon they will be on your screens, and we have them now. As Ante Kotoko will face uh, Istanbul, Brekum Chelsea will play against Inter Allies, Hazakes, Gold Stars, Farnard, New Edubiasi, Ashanti Gold will lock horns with Mighty Jets, and Metro Stars will visit the home grounds of Rose Park, Ride to Dream, 
or who dynamos are also can face out depending on who is able to come at tops from that very fixture. Okou United will host Midema and Bechem United will play any of these, uh, that is any of them who comes through Adriana Asokwa Deportivo. Dunkwa United, um, Dawenya Royal Faith, and Bazooka. Very interesting fixtures we have for you this very weekend in the round of 16 pairings of the FA Cup. Oh, so we just uh, hope all the best for this very rounds of the MTN FA Cup. But meanwhile, the first Capital Plus Premier League fixtures uh, are also um, on. And we have Heart of Lions playing against Wa All Stars. Ash Gold will face off... Um, with Bechem United, Hazakis will also play against Kim Faisal, Amidas Professionals against Interallies, and Idiana will be hosting Accra Hearts of Oak. So those are the fixtures we have for the first Capital Plus Premier League. Ghana has uh, slipped down the latest FIFA rankings as announced, and Ghana is 37th on the log. Despite the huge success chalked by the local Black Stars by reaching the Chan final tournament in South Africa, FIFA dropped the Black Stars by 13 places, further damaging the credibility of the much-criticized ranking system by the governing body. The ranking released by FIFA also showed the Black Stars losing its long-held second position in Africa to Algeria and Cape Verde, who were both not in action in the past month. Both countries have not achieved any better success than the Black Stars over the past month or in recent months. FIFA just last month confirmed it had reached a decision to add the Chan tournament to its recognized A matches, which are used for the monthly ranking of national teams. Nigeria have dropped six places to 47th in the latest world rankings. The Afghan holders who finished third at the recent Chan event in South Africa are placed eighth on the continent behind Ivory Coast, Algeria, Cape Verde, Ghana, Egypt, Tunisia and Cameroon. Globally, world and European champions Spain, Germany and Argentina remain the top three teams. Sunderland uh, will be hosting Southampton. Cardiff City will play against Wigan Athletic. Sheffield Wednesday, Charlton Athletic. Manchester City and Everton, um, Swansea, Sheffield United, Nottingham Forest, um, Arsenal against Liverpool and Brighton and Albion Hall City. Well, I, I think the fixtures uh, for the morning, really, we, we didn't get right. We'll try to correct them in subsequent uh, programs as well. But now we have to go to Spain, and we have the fixtures now. And um, Elche will face um, Osasuna. Atletico Madrid will play against Real Valdolid. And Levante will also be hosting Almeria. And Rafa Cano will visit the home grounds of Barcelona. Well, Real would also play against um, Celta Vigo. Real Betis will be hosted by Granada. Real Madrid will make sure this time they get it right against Heritafe and uh, Atletico Bilbao will play against Espanyol. Sevilla FC, Valencia, Malaga, Real Sociedad are the other fixtures we have. Well, that's it for Sports on the AM Show, which is always live on the Joy uh, News channel of uh, Multi-TV. It's brought to you by Tigo and Cowbell.